since 2003. This is the Sports Source. East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Hype Wrench and by Junk Be Gone and by the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning. Welcome into the Junk Be Gone studios for today's edition of the Sports Source. We got a packed house here today. We're going to be uh, bringing you all kinds of information. We'll talk, obviously, about the uh, the pilot deal with Nealon Stadium. Uh, we will talk about ESPN's views on which games Tennessee will win and lose, win chance percentage and all that stuff. But we'll probably start today by talking about Tennessee's incredible run on the recruiting trail that goes on and on. I'm sure you're aware that Tennessee inked another, well, they didn't ink them yet, got another commitment from a five-star recruit. We'll talk to Ryan Callahan and the rest of the crew about that. Let's just go ahead and jump into this show. First segment brought to you by the folks at Junk Be Gone. I want, if you want to get your property, home, office cleaned up and uncluttered, take advantage of Junk Be Gone's back to school special. Get a two day rental for just $299, $299, and they'll haul everything away. Then they dispose of it in an environmentally friendly way. It's a 15 yard driveway dumpster. Great company, and man, it makes it easy, I'm telling you. Junkbegone.biz. Check them out online this week. You'll be very, very happy that you did. All right, let's welcome in the panel. I mentioned him already, Ryan Callahan, right there from GoVols247.com. From 991 The Sports Animal, Vince Ferrar, right here. Thank you. Thank you. From Full Disclosure Productions, we have Paige Dower right there. And beside her, we have Tyler Ivins, also from 991 The Sports Animal. Thanks for having me. So it's like Route the, number today. Yeah, the Ohio State University and the Sports Animal. I need to start doing the sports source. All right. <laughs> With italics, please. Yeah, yeah exactly. All yeah. right. Uh, Vols landed yet another highly sought after recruit yesterday, this time five star offensive tackle David Sanders from over in the Charlotte area. Chose the Vols over Georgia, Ohio State, and Nebraska. The five star tells you all you need to know, but you're also beating out now teams that are at the top of the polls again. So uh, just a tremendous run that Tennessee's been on of late. Uh, this, of course, being the number three player in the country, according to uh, 247.com. Following up, Tennessee, just two, three weeks ago, they got a commitment from the number one player in 247's 2026 class in Faison Brandon, the quarterback, also from North Carolina. They're doing some heavy lifting over in the Tar Heel State. Ryan, talk to us about David Sanders, the player, the recruitment, how they got him. Yeah, obviously big time talent as you would imagine from that uh, from that ranking, but just a really athletic tackle. Uh, all of the the length, the size, the athleticism. That's the thing that usually jumps out at you about these these no brainer tackles that are top five, top ten players. They can move as well as defensive linemen. And in fact, one of uh, our director of scouting, Andrew Ivins at Twenty Four Seven Sports, mentioned he thinks he could be a highly ranked defensive line prospect if he wanted to go that route. No. He could have been a top two fifty kind of player nationally. So um, that that you're talking about that kind of athlete. So. I saw him at a camp a year and a half ago. He was 255 pounds, really lean at that time. Now he's 290 or so. Um, so you're getting a, a great athlete, a guy that could just play on either side of the ball, and you project that to the offensive tackle for three years, keep developing him. This is a guy who's got a chance to be an early first-round pick in a few years. So a uh, huge pickup here, and, and Tennessee did a great job in this recruitment. Got him on campus five times in the last five, four and a half months. Uh, to, to get him on campus that much obviously speaks to the job they did recruiting him and you know beating out not just the teams you mentioned, but Clemson, Alabama were in there. Clemson was the team he grew up liking, and being from the Charlotte area, this is a recruitment Clemson probably would have won five or six years ago. Now they weren't even a finalist, so things have obviously changed in the recruiting world, but Tennessee doing a great job just making him a bigger priority than anybody else. He was, I mean, number one on the board for months, regardless of position. Tennessee set its sights on him, made it happen, and they've addressed a huge position of need in the last year with Lance Hurd and David Sanders in a pretty short time really anchoring that position yeah. with both bookend tackles. That's what I was going to say. You've, you're going to have some holes along that offensive line next year. You have to rebuild the – a lot of guys are seniors. But to have Hurd, who's young, that you transferred in, to have this guy on the other side, whichever side they pop him on, that's a pretty good start to your offensive line. If I had to, if I had to start – I'm going to start with my tackles and protect my quarterback to begin with. So that's a good position for them. Vince, you were going to say. Yeah, and you had, uh, before that, you had Darnell Wright play like a five-star when he ended up being the number 10 pick in the great year in 2022. It's a neat position. He's the, your highest-ranked player 
obviously. And he fits the offense as well because, mm-hmm. as you guys know, they have those offensive linemen on the move if they yeah. can. So uh, it, it was a must-get for Tennessee and, and really puts them on another level here in the 2025 class. And you saw their team ranking really elevated because of it. Yeah, I meant to mention they're up to number six when I looked yesterday afternoon. That hasn't mm-hmm. shifted since Don't then. Don't believe so. <laughs> now, the good news is they're up to number six in the nation. The bad news is that's still number five in the SEC. Right. But still, when you're, when you're recruiting at this level – no one knows which kid's going to tear up an ankle, which kid's going to go home because his girlfriend broke up with him, which kid's going to flunk out of school, et cetera, et cetera, transfer. So you're, you're swimming in, in great waters right now. That's the key. Uh, Paige and Tyler, your thoughts on this incredible recruiting role that Josh Eiple has him on? Yeah, and I think to put it into perspective, in 2023, Nico was the number two overall player. So is Sanders. He's the mm-hmm. number two overall player for his class, and I think it just puts it into perspective what a talent they're getting out of Sanders, sure. what Heupel's been able to do in just four seasons to get such top talent, not only in the position, but overall in you know, ratings that 24-7 has. Yeah. The one that stands out to me was when Josh Heupel got this job, there were a lot of people who said, great, love the offense. Great, love what he can bring coaching staff-wise. What can he do on the recruiting trail? Oh. Now you have an idea of what he can do on the recruiting trail. We're starting to see the fruits of that with these numbers starting to stack up. I think not only does it show what these coaches are able to do, the guys that they're bringing in, some that are leaving, going back to the NFL, and then replacing them with the recruits that they had. Outside of that, look, Ryan already picked up all the athleticism, all the great things. I watched the announcement yesterday from start to finish, and I noticed that there was a young, hearty kid there, spoke very well about his family. And it seems like not only do you have a great player who was raised by a great family, but this was a very passionate selection for him. And it seems like there are a lot of people here in Knoxville that always say, I want a player who's bought into the University of Tennessee, the tradition, and given it all to me. And I'm just a 38-year-old guy who works in the media. He checked all the boxes for me. I thought he did a fantastic job with the delivery. I think that when you look at this, it answers questions for people like me. I, I make no bones about the fact I do not like the recruiting deal. It's, it's a pain in the butt to follow. So I salute guys like Ryan <laughs> nope. who spend their lives chasing 17- and 8-year-old kids on the phone. Uh, for me, it drives me crazy. So I was looking at this last year, and I spoke to you, and I'm like, you go 11-2, and two, you win the Orange Bowl, you've got NIL rolling now. Shouldn't you be capitalizing more? And we didn't see it. And you kind of broke it down. Well, a lot of those kids had already made it. They'd gone through a long period of their recruitment. They'd already made up their minds, so they're seeing you at the last. You might be able to turn their head a little bit with that orange ball, that 11-2, and two, but they're already down the fast track somewhere else. Whereas now you're starting to see younger kids who it took a year, but that 11-2, and two, that being number one in the polls in November, that had an impact on some of these younger guys. So you're looking at what they're doing, number six in the country, the number one player in the country for next year, the number three player in the country for this year. You're starting to see them take advantage of all the things they have going for them. Uh, no matter who they bring in, whether it's Butch Jones, Derek Dooley, I've said on the show, you're going to wind up with a top 15 class. That's basically what Tennessee does. I, right. think, I think we could go over there and coach them to a t- and recruit to a top 15 level. The question is, could Heupel or whoever they hired get them into that top 10? Get them above that. And to see them doing it now makes me feel like, okay, they figured this out and they're putting all the pieces together. That's the key, I think. They're figure, figuring it out. They've, obviously, it's year four for this staff. They've had a lot of continuity. You see the relationships yeah, paying off. They've point. been recruiting David Sanders for two years now. Um, so that makes a big difference. And when, like you said, that these are guys that saw Tennessee beat Alabama a year and a half ago or almost two years ago now, and they remember that game, and they see, have seen Tennessee win 20 games in two years. Not just that, though, I think they've fine-tuned the NIL approach a little bit. I think you learn from mistakes in the past. You find, find ways to avoid those mistakes, and you say, we're going to put these eggs in this basket and things like that. And it helps you figure out how to not waste your time on players you're not going to get and win battles that you can win. And, and Tennessee's done a good job of that and adjusting as they learn. I think it's also telling that you don't see this program getting racked into the transfer portal by guys that they're begging to stay. Yeah. I mean, you don't have them – having to dive into the portal constantly like Lane Kiffin is having to. And kudos to him. He's winning with it for now. But I wouldn't want to be following a team like that because I would be constantly worried that one of these years you're going to get the wrong personalities. It seems that the culture is being built. You have continuity with the staff. You have people that come here and stay here. And you're not chasing a ton of newcomers. You're just picking an occasional piece to go in there. I hate to say it because I don't want to jinx it, but it does seem like they're building this thing in completely the right way. At the end of the day, culture is always going to be your tried and true. You even see today, Tony Vitello still talking about, you know, if you're here for NIL money, we're not it. 
Obviously, you'll get it here at Tennessee, but at the end of the day, it comes down to culture. That's exactly what Josh Heupel and them are doing. You hear newcomers like Jeremiah's Hurt talking during uh, media availabilities that he felt like family right away all through the entire recruiting process. It's made for a seamless transition when he got here to Tennessee. So as nice as it is to have collectives like Spire and the fan base that Neyland Stadium in Tennessee has, it comes down to culture at the end of the day because that's what your base is going to be every single day at practice and through your tenure at Tennessee. And quickly, when they first approached the, and I know everybody does this now, but at the time it was the light shows, the fireworks. I was thinking, okay, that's, that's nice. That's great for the in-stadium fan experience. Then you go back and watch a lot of the interviews 247 does, a lot of publications. They get in front of these kids. How can you not want to play? Yeah, Tennessee is a great place. How would you not want to place, man? It's crazy. The lights, the fan base. Did you see what happened the other night with Tennessee, Alabama, the crowd? It just seems like they've Hollywooded it up a little bit, if I may. <laughs> and people want to be a part of this must-see TV product, which goes back to everything they're building from the ground up and the way that it's kind of expanding. I, they're clicking on all cylinders right now over on the hill. Okay, let's kind of roll this topic into the next one. In the next segment, we'll be talking a little bit about on-field, off-field uh, recruiting Tennessee's in its best shape since. Now, uh, if you're sitting there going, didn't you ask that a few months ago? Yes, I did. We had three different panelists, though. Ryan and I will hush because we answered it in the last time. But I want to get three new takes on where is this program. There have been a lot of new recruits who have been added since May when I last asked that question. When's the last time Tennessee was rolling like it is right now? Come on back on the Sports Source. <laughs> 